Okay, so let's get started. Welcome. It's so exciting to be part of camp, even if it's virtual camp. And I hope everybody is safe from the fires and all the other challenges that we have this particular year. So I've been thinking a lot about food photography and especially when the lockdown first started in New York and we were advised not to go out, I became obsessed with food photography and obsessed with cooking macrobiotic food and photographing everything in the preparation phase and the completed phase and then really enjoying it. So I wanted to share some of the image, some images that are helpful when you're planning food photographs. And I've uploaded them into the chat room. And if, if anyone can indicate by a thumbs up or some other indication whether they can see those images or Patrick, if you could let me know. The other thing I could do is share my screen. Would that be a good idea? So. If I share my screen, it's probably. Oh, you, I can share, you can share your screen. Uh, the, the issue with the images in the chat is if you're on a computer, you can see them. It doesn't work on uh, mobile. So if you can share your screen, that's going to be better. Okay, so I see in the chat room, share, share screen, please. OK, let's, get, let's try it. I'll go to, desk, to my desktop. <laughs> Well, this, is, this was a great idea, except for that um, I can't do that, evidently. So you're trying that. Here we go. Yay. OK. The question is, can this be seen by people, this little image? Yes. Any way you can't, any way you can't uh, open, it, open it up or something like that so we can see it bigger? Yeah, so there it is, the Archambaldo image. and. Um, you know, it's not really clear to me how big that is showing up for you, but it's a picture of a man. It's a painting by, made hundreds of years ago by a man named Archambaldo. And he created a human figure made entirely of vegetables. Whether you're seeing this now on the screen share or whether you see it later, you will absolutely be delighted by this image. Next image we're going to go to is Edward Weston's pepper. Um, again, it's hard to know whether this is showing up for the participants, but you're probably really familiar with this iconic black and white image taken by Edward Weston in 1927 of a green pepper. Finally, we're going to go at, look at the, a diagram of a Fibonacci spiral. Big, big name for something that you see all the time in nature. For example, here is Edward Weston's uh, Nautilus shell, which is a perfect example of the Fibonacci spiral. So let's just go to actually doing some photography. I hope everyone has some food and a nice surface to work on. So I'm just gonna put my laptop down and go to the main event. Okay, so what I have set up for you here is a working surface for a photograph of food. And I've chosen to use my camera as opposed to my computer so that you could actually see exactly what I'm seeing when I look from directly over the food object. So again, um, if you could, Elaine, if you could give a thumbs up or anyone just to, as far as make sure that this is actually uh, visible, which apparently it is. Okay, so what we're seeing right now with the camera tilted directly over the item is called an overhead shot or a flat lay in, the, in terms of design. I'm going to zoom out a little bit so that you can see the whole thing. And you're getting a view of my uh, dining room table, 
which is also my kitchen table, which is the only table. So this, this, this is a traditional way of photographing food. And if you're in a restaurant with your iPhones, it's probably the way you're gonna take the picture directly overhead. The other traditional ways of photographing food are the three quarter, and then finally, just gonna get off the tripod here for a second, would be looking at something directly from the side. I'm gonna just zoom in here so that you guys can see. If you were advertising um, a product that was, or showing a picture of a product that was um, more vertical in nature. Sorry that the camera's having a little trouble focusing on such a close range. So I'm sure you all understand that. There's the, the overhead or flat lay, there's the three quarter, and then there's the directly from the side. And each of these makes the hero, the bread, the, the seed bread, makes the hero look more or less like the most important thing in the frame. Hold on for one second, going back to the tripod so that I can go hands free. So what we've learned and camp at previous sessions is that what you do to the image adds flavor. Well, that's really great when you're dealing with food to add flavor, but how do you add flavor in a world of, of images? Well, you add flavor by adding props, by adding um, shapes by adding and subtracting light. So the first thing we're going to do is just observe the quality of light here. Just so you know, the light in my apartment is coming in this window. As you can see, the window is covered with New York City grime. So it's already a kind of a diffused light. But what if we make the light even more diffused? I'm going to hold a diffuser in front of the window and you'll see that just by changing the quality of light things look really different in the, in the bread it's softer here's without the diffuser here's with the diffuser so if you want to change the quality of something you can add a diffuser to your window it can be it's mine is a professional photo diffuser but it can be anything, a white sheet, a piece of paper, anything you have. Another thing that adds a fun quality to a photograph is to add something reflective. In this case, I have a spatter shield. Finally, a use for the spatter shield. Just by placing the spatter shield around the bread, of course, if I was looking at the right end, it might be helpful. It so you can see it. If I'm going to add, so here's the, sh you notice there's a deep shadow in the front of the bread, but as soon as I add the spatter shield, it lights up the bread. So if I were to change my perspective and bring the camera down, I've added a whole quality of light into this picture that wasn't there before. The next, next thing you could add into a picture, zoom out again, you can see the whole workspace, is other elements that tell the story. For example, what if you took a piece of the bread and toasted it? So now I've got a shot with not only the baked good, the baked product, but I'm sorry about seeing my computer so attractively by the side here. But as when I start to crop in, I'm telling more of a story. I've got the parchment burnt, wrinkled and kind of messed up just the way it came out of the oven. And then I've got this round plate with a, a rectangular piece of bread on it, which I can put at an angle that's complementary to the bread itself. And then I can add, whoops, gotta go to the fridge. The most exciting thing to add is some faux butter. So I can take some butter
and actually put it on the toast. I hope this is making everyone hungry for lunch. For you, it's too early. For me, it's lunchtime. So I can add a texture that way, and then I can have the butter dish either tell part of the story or not part of the story, and just maybe the knife itself with a little butter on it. So as you can see, I'm building elements of the story. Another thing is I can scatter some of the ingredients that made up the bread so that the viewer can have a feeling of what the components were that made this bread up or any product. Now, one thing I would probably want to do is not have the butter knife sticking directly into the shot. So maybe I would change the angle, take out my other knife. And then finally, what about having the real enjoyment of it, which is the meal itself, that we're taking away the bread and we finally gotten down to the actual meal itself. I'm just gonna go off the tripod here for a second. And here we are kind of creating a little bit of a story that has a narrative, baked bread, a plate to eat it on, the butter on it, and finally, the soy, the soy coffee with the almond, with the oat milk in it, and here we have all the different elements. Now, the thing to do is to, is to arrange them so that they are pretty and make you want more information. So that you start asking yourself questions. Should the handle be in the picture? Should the handle intersect the, the butter knife? Should the butter knife be down here? Oh, I don't like the handle, so I'm going to move it out. Should I have the bread in the picture? Is there enough ref reflection on the whole thing? Well, let me bring the spatter shield back in. And see what I get there. Well, that's adding a little bit of flair, a nice, a nice little bit of reflectivity to the thing. And I feel like I like it better. So those are just some of the ways that we can we can add and subtract. Subtracting is by moving the splatter shield. Adding it is by putting it into the shot. So now let's go to an exercise where, where all the participants actually get to do something with their food. So I'm gonna um, move this delicious tray, get rid of all the seeds and Yummy seed bread, this recipe, I'd be happy to share with people. It's totally delicious. And we're gonna switch to everybody at home getting out a nice clean surface, maybe a piece of white paper, black paper, gray paper. I'm just gonna use this piece of slate. Like most of my props, I found this at the thrift store. I think it was, a, it was one of my more expensive purchases, it was about $8. So I'm just going to use this because it's a nice neutral gray and so it won't distract from anything else that I'm doing. So let's all start with a clean surface and then choose an object to photograph. So I'm going to start with a classic. It worked for Edward Weston. I'm sure it can work for me. The infamous pepper. There's the pepper. So put your object on your surface. And let's start to examine it. Okay. Does it look better facing the light? But my light is coming from the window. The window is on this side. Is it going to stand up on its own? Which side is the most attractive? Well, this side seems to have a little more personality. So I'm going to start with this side of the pepper and think, well, what the heck am I going to do with this? How am I going to make it look as cool as Edward Weston's pepper? 
How am I going to show all the gullies, the highlights? What's going to add interest to the pepper? Well, one thing would be standing it upright, which I'll have to figure out. Another thing could just be leaving it as it is. What about showing some of the shadow areas? So take your object and your tin foil and set up your tin foil or reflective surface or white card on the shadow side of your object. So let's all take a minute to do that. So once you have your object set up and your, your, your reflective side set up, just examine it carefully. See what you can leave out of the picture. So I'm zooming in here. Maybe the interest in this picture is more of an, on the zoom. Maybe it's showing the whole thing. Maybe there's too much light coming in the window to make this interesting at all. Maybe I'm at the wrong ISO. And as I change the settings, I get a more dramatic picture. As I move the reflector in, see what's happening as I'm seeing more and more of the shadow side of the picture of the pepper. And then finally, when I bring the diffuser in front of the window, I change the lighting. I'll add back on the ISO so you can see it, but I change the quality of the lighting. Bright window light coming in, very reflective, and now soft window light coming in. Bright and soft. Okay, moving on. We have our basic uh, um, element. We're gonna take our first picture of the pepper alone. So I'm gonna use my iPhone on square. And it is in focus, although it doesn't appear to be because you're seeing it through the camera. And just get a good record shot of your object, of your food. Try turning it and seeing if you can get a better, better view from looking at it from another perspective. And then lastly, try using a diffuser and see if the final, the final piece looks better with softer shadows. Okay, those are my three shots of the pepper. Where did you put the diffuser? Oh, sorry, could you say that again? Where did you put the diffuser? Oh, I put, I'll, I'll, show you, I'll show you the scene. I hope everyone's sitting down when they see New York City, okay? Here's my window. Okay, here's the, the setup, right? Um, you can see my setup right here, right? Mm -hmm. hey, is that okay? Yeah. And the diffuser is, in front of the window. I'm going to hold it up. I'm going to just show you exactly where I put it, which is kind of, it's, see it's coming into the shot. Yeah. So here's my window. I'm going to run over there. I'm not sure that this is pointed in the right direction. Let's just try this. Can you see it? Yeah. So I'm holding it right in front of the window. Mm -hmm. But for the purpose of the shot, I'll just show you my actual my actual setup for the purpose of showing of what I did, I brought it right next to the cutting board like that. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. It took the shadow away from it. Exactly. From the, yeah. and what I, actually, let me just clarify that. What the diffuser does is it takes the highlights down. Okay. Here's the pepper with tons of highlights. Here's the pepper with subdued highlights. You see how they get softer and larger? Yeah. This is called a specular highlight. This is a soft diffused highlight. 
So if you can imagine that this was someone's face and they had slightly oily skin, they would look better with a, something between their face and the sun, a diffuser. So who, whoever asked that, I'm very grateful to you because it's actually great to know people are on this Zoom. Hi, Sachi. It was me who asked it. Hi, Deborah. Hi. Hi. It's hard to tell who's, who's speaking. You know, there you go. David, Jean, Richardson. I hope this, Jennifer Hutzel. Wow, exciting. Hi, Jen. So, um, okay, back to reality. Where are we going from here? We're going into the world of artistic imagination. We started with some classical examples. We saw how to, how to change things up by adding and subtracting light. Just to go back to the question, is that adding the reflector on the side brings more specular highlights in. But it, it's coming in on the shadow side, so it's kind of acceptable. The diffuser takes away specular highlights. It softens the whole thing up. We have more of an Edward West. Okay, going on. Where are we going from here? We're going into the world of imagination. So you have your pepper or your, your object. I came up with the pepper yesterday, so I didn't send that idea around. And how about a knife? We're gonna make the pepper into something creative. We're gonna add and subtract from the pepper. So what I'm just gonna do is take my object and cut it. I don't know what it's gonna look like when it's done. I don't know, this is, this is happening in real time. I did not prepare this, I didn't practice doing this. I figured I can cut a pepper, for, I can't. I'm gonna take away all the parts of the pepper that I find distracting, like the seeds. So whatever your fruit or vegetable is at home, take a minute and clean it up. And now I just have these slices of the pepper. Okay, where am I going with this? Well, I thought peppers kind of look like flowers, don't they? They're just interesting. They're interesting to look at. They're, they're, I mean, although they're not very macro, they're fun to look at. So I thought, why don't I make a, a pepper into a flower? And that was my idea. So I went to Trader Joe's and I got some peppers. And I thought I would just arrange them like a flower. Now, they're not that colorful or interesting yet, but what if they had, what if there were some other flowers mixed in? So I just got a couple of, of other peppers and I thought, well, let's make up a, a bouquet of flowers with all sorts of different, different, uh, different colors. Okay, so here we go, adding one more layer. Now, we're, now we've entered into the world of complementary colors and colors. So once you start adding color, into your composition, you're taking the brain on a completely different trip. Like, wow, we're in a completely different world now. We started with the humble pepper. I'm gonna get off the tripod. My camera is on a tripod for everybody and I'm just gonna to come to this overview, overview position. Now, as you can see, I just darkened up the screen. I did that because I wanted you to see how changing the overall lighting quality made the picture more dramatic. I also stood in front of the window, so I took down the light a little bit with my body. Here's the same scene with the diffuser in place. I'm gonna take it out. See how reflective it is? Bring it back in, diffused. And I think these peppers could use a little kick on the side. So I'm gonna add back my reflective uh, spatter shield. Sorry about the bad camera work, everybody. Holding it and doing this at the same time can be challenging. So there's a, adding back a little bit of the reflection. Here, I'll take it out. We'll see if, it, if it's even doing anything. It is doing a little something on the side. It's very subtle. 
that appears with it and here's without it. See, watch the red, the red pepper in particular. Without it, with it. So, and I also kind of like just seeing the whole thing reflected vaguely in the, in the, in the um, spatter shield. So now we're gonna add one more element to this. Because flowers generally have stems. So everyone take a moment and work on their composition, which are all gonna be shared with BEI. Hopefully we'll have a contest with a prize. Hold on a second. Well, I'll be right back with the stems. Okay, here we are. I thought that, that this project might benefit from having some ready-made stems. So I picked up a, 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 also at Trader Joe's, I picked up a couple of asparagus, package of asparagus stems. And I'm just gonna place them somewhat randomly, but on the corner of the image, I'm gonna place them purposefully with the round, the most rounded asparagus stems coming in on the side. So I'm just making a little bouquet And this is just, you know, this is just an idea, like just how to make something fun. Like here we, we've all been, we've all been in lockdown or <clears throat> with restricted movements, not traveling, not going to camp. How can we just have fun and be creative? Okay, is there any way, Patrick or Jeannie, for the participants to share their screens? Can I, maybe I can. Yes, participants can share the screen. They can also uh, 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 either, either share the screen, they can also do that from their mobile and just turn their camera on, and you can see it in the gallery view too, for those who don't have a camera. So do I have to change the settings that people can share their screens? <laughs> no, 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 they can just share their screen. Okay, I, so. I have it open right now, so you guys can share your screen anytime you want. That would be wonderful if I could see people's screens and see what they're shooting. In the meantime if you go on get if you go on get a review like people are turning their their views on so you can check that out. At the end I could see what people have created that would be great. I would love it if people emailed me nancy at nancyadler.com or shared them with Cam. So where I was going with this particular composition was I was thinking of what's called the Fibonacci spiral. And I'll show you a, uh, a printout of what it looks like. And it is part of the things I was trying to share at the beginning. So this is, let's see if I can get this in the right position. Here we go. The Fibonacci spiral. It's almost the shape of a nautilus. You see there are each section of the spiral is actually a square, a rectangle. And in each rectangle, there's a curved line connecting two points of the rectangle, for example, or square. Right here, a square and, a, and an, a little bit of an arc, a square with an arc, a square with an arc, a square with an arc, a rectangle with an arc, separated into two squares with arcs, and then finally a teeny, tiny, teeny, tiny little one. So this is a shape that we see in nature and our brain records it, doesn't think too much about it. How can we use this as a compositional source, an inspiration. How can we look at 
something like a spiral in nature and be inspired to create uh, food photography or design, design something that has those qualities. So what I was doing when I put the asparagus at the top left corner here, or my left, was in my mind, I was thinking about the curve of the Fibonacci spiral. And the Fibonacci spiral can face any way. It can be like this, a vertical, a horizontal, upside down, doesn't matter. There's no right or wrong about it. So if I'm gonna follow that, the points of interest are, are um, kind of predetermined. So I've made my composition a little bit crazy and messy. So I'm gonna take out some of the, the um, some of the elements of my composition and just clean it up a little bit. Just to see if it gets a little more classical looking. It may or may not. It may be that this is boring. It may be the other way was better. You can have a vote on that. But these are just some of the ways to change up your design, to follow um, guidelines that are well known in art or to be creative on your own. So once again, I'm gonna just put the camera back on the tripod and we're gonna move on to the next little demo. You buy peppers, thank you very much. We're going on to perhaps the the most the simplest and also the most complicated, which is the rule of thirds. We're going to come back to some of the other things. So for the rule of thirds, which I'm sure you know because you have a camera or a phone and you look at things, even my camera has a grid built into it, which when I view something, there's the rule of thirds is, is well displayed. So I'm just going to do a quick... The rule of thirds is like a grid, and in the grid, everything is given the same amount of space. Rule of thirds. So if this was, if this photo, if this was an image of the orange, the orange is now in the center of the of the grid, smack dab in the center. And that is um, when I move to the side. Now my orange and its shadow are more or less in the top part of it. I'm gonna move it again. I've changed the orientation of the, of the camera to the orange. Now the orange is off to the right. I've changed where the center object is in relationship to the rule of thirds. It's now back right in the center. Okay, now how do we make this interesting? Well, first of all, Let's take this orange out of its orange out of its uh, case. So we have more elements to work with. And let's have an odd number of segments in as our um, our subject matter for this. So we have an odd number of segments. And if I want to create an odd number of elements in the whole composition, I would take I would add one more segment and take out the orange, or I could add another segment, have four segments and keep the orange in. And now I've got a different, you know, I've got five total elements. So I'm gonna keep the orange in only at the corner. Then I'm gonna take the segments and arrange them as if this was just a demonstration of the rule of thirds. Here we go, rule of thirds. I'll, I'll zoom out so you can see. There you go, just simple rule of thirds. 
there's the thing in the center and something to each side. Now we're going to jazz it up a little bit. We're going to go from the rule of thirds to what's called the phi. The phi is the golden mean. So the rule of thirds, everything is even and there's proportions, the proportions are same. Phi, there's more interest in the center point, uh, the off center of the center. So that would mean bringing, let's say three, and putting them a little closer together. So my oranges are not in exactly in the center. They're kind of around the center. Just playing with the shapes to make it interesting. I mean, sometimes you're just doing something just for the sake of practice. I, I don't think that I'll ever publish or share a picture of, hi Elaine, a picture of um, three orange slices. But it's a great, exercise for my brain. Nancy, we can't see you. Say that again? We can't see you, what you're doing. Oh, we can't see the oranges? No, Elaine, Elaine is sharing your screen right now. Oh, maybe because I, I ended up, maybe because I tried. Ah, so that's really, you need to stop the, the screen share. On top, the bar with the red. When did it stop sharing? We have a, there's a top bar with a red box. Just stop it. Oh, I see. It, when somebody else is sharing, mine can't share. There you go. There you go. So now you're back on. Yes, it's all good. That's better. So three orange slices closer together as opposed to being in the rule of thirds. Now it's the Fibonacci, it's a, sorry, the, the golden mean where they're interacting. Okay, now how do we make this interesting? It's so far not that interesting, I hope you'll agree. So we're gonna add, um, we're gonna add interest to it. And I'm going over to my window where I had very carefully, of course it's not visible now, I created some um, things to add in. Just something simple. I'm just, I just picked this off of my, um, out of my window, which is amazing. Just what I'm saying is that we can grow flowers right in Manhattan. And I'm just gonna add this little element into the mix. I'm gonna dial down my exposure so it's a little more interesting. And I'm gonna zoom in. I'm just gonna move my, my cutting board down. Now I, I kind of, this is fun. It just, it's just simple and there's no, you know, no great uh, old surprise waiting at the end of this one. But what I think is cool about it is that it's just making something from nothing. And the more elements that you change, I'm gonna show you right now, when you start adding textures and props into the, into the picture, things, even this very simple, simple, simple design. For example, I'm gonna add, just changing, the surface I'm working on, right? I've done nothing but go from this light colored board to a darker board. It's more or less the same design. Now you may say, Nancy, this is the most boring demonstration of orange slices or tangerine slices I've ever seen. And I don't blame you. It's not meant to be rocket science. It's just how we can change our world in the simplest possible way by changing the surfaces that we're working on by adding and subtracting light. What if I bring a plate into it? And I have the plate as part of this dark surface. I'm just playing around with these simple little elements. I'm gonna take out one of my, my orange slices, so I only have three things. 
I'm going to bring down the light a little bit. Now I've got, got something of interest, maybe. Maybe you could say that in spite of all this just being playing around, that I'm, you could say, hey, it's not that far from the Fibonacci, is it? I've got a little thing over here. I've got the curve of the plate. Of course, I have mine reversed, but it's not that far from the Fibonacci. So maybe we're together just creating things of genius and wonder. And here is now the final, another final element. Nothing's final, final. Here's the little reflector that I'm bringing to the side, my spatter shield, which is gonna add a little sparkle to this little orange piece. I'm not gonna, I can even, if do one other thing, I'll just hold up the diffuser. See what happens when the diffuser comes in? Here's the diffuser going out. See how the shadow of the flower is diminished completely when the diffuser is in the picture. Here's the diffuser. Here's it without the diffuser. Whoops. That's the computer starting to fall off the table. Okay, now we're going to go one step further in this. What happens when we add another unexpected kind of color in? What happens when we add a pop of color that's complementary? to the orange slices, orange and blue, complementary colors. So let's just find a little edge of this napkin, which you may recognize from the shibori we did last summer at camp. And let's just add that in. Now I'm not saying I you know, love where I added it in, but just the idea of having a little pop of complementary color So we're adding color, and not only are we adding color, we're also adding texture. Here's the soft cloth with its vibrant design, the earthenware plate, the items on it. It's just adding interest and in changing up the um, changing up the design and adding new elements to it. Now let's just say we're going to go. Let me just check the time here. 15. Okay, we have 15 more minutes. Great. We're going to add one final element to this, which is just changing the color completely by bringing a neutral plate into the into the this uh, mix. I'm just going to set it up. I'm not going to clean up the the uh, oranges. This guy is kind of like a little face. Sometimes that's how I felt during the pandemic lockdown. So you can have fun just You can have uh, crazy hair. So there's my, my, uh, my friend. This is who I've been talking to during the pandemic. Okay, let's leave some time for questions and answers. So Patrick, how can we do that? Well, anybody can unmute, the, unmute themselves and uh, ask question or they can also ask question in the chat. And I'm gonna switch the view from the table to um, in general. I'm going to sit down. Peppers. Nancy, it's Jean. I have a question. Hi, Jean. Do you ever use um, uh, other techniques in food photography like? I used to have in my catalog where they'd spray stuff on the food to make it look dripping fresh or whatever. Great. I love that question. And I'm going to answer that by going to get my product. I'll be right back. All right. Now, 
Now, if you're doing commercial food photography, you know, in other words, like for Jim's catalog, which had to show people how enticing the particular um, food uh, or utensil or ingredient was, it has to look delicious. So I have found, and this I've just been doing my, for my own fun because um, all the food photography I've done has been